Well, hello again internet. This is David White here from Zestos and we're talking about nitrogen and citrus today. Uh, when we first moved on the site four years ago it was clear that uh, the orchard had, had suffered neglect for probably about a decade which was really good in one respect because it meant that there were no nasties. There were no nasty chemicals in the soil and plants etc etc. But on the downside of that the uh, trees were looking unhealthy and they needed some love. So I've done a video already about the trace elements. Now we're talking about uh, nitrogen or NPK. We've got enough of the phosphorus and the potassium in the soil already and so it's the nitrogen we're working on. And so the first thing we've done and uh, have done for a number of years is to buy in mulch. So this is a mulch pile behind me and uh, it is uh, a truckload and so it's got a lot of sawdust in it, uh, shavings, but it's also got that's a wee bit of horse poo that's slowly degrading and also got chicken manure and green waste in it as well, uh, silage and stuff like that. And so that composts in and cooks away and provides us with nitrogen that we then spread around the trees and spread around the citrus trees. So that's all very good. Now I was concerned about, since I don't know the source of the poos, um, about antibiotics or uh, anti-worm things in the, in the poo, especially with horses, getting anti-worm doses. Uh, but we've found that as we've placed it onto the soil that we've seen an increase in the worms, we've seen an increase in the soil life, we've seen an increase in the tree life, and so we believe as a system, whatever, if there's any negatives in there, they're being cooked out in the compost making process. So we're very pleased about that. But uh, obviously we long term would like to produce our own nitrogen, all our own nitrogen that we need here um, through nitrogen fixing and so we don't need to buy in things over the long term. So let's go have a look at what to see what we're doing at the moment with regards to that. Catch up. Here we are, we're looking now at some red clover. Clover is obviously a nitrogen fixer and we've made sure that our soil's got plenty of cobalt and molybdenum which is what they need to fix nitrogen. And so red clover is a annual so this will grow and uh, then set seed and uh, then it will regrow next spring. And so this has naturally occurred, we're not too sure why, when we changed, there was no clover on this place when we bought it, but due to the change in our management practice it seems to all appeared and seems to be thriving, which we're very very pleased about. And just a few steps away we've got white clover, and so white clover is your more commonly uh, known clover because it's a perennial and so that will grow there amongst the sward every year and uh, come back and flower every year. And so we're very pleased to have lots of clover and we do everything we can to support the clover as it gives us nitrogen. This area is lucerne uh, or uh, alfalfa depending on which uh, English or US kind of words you use. And it is a perennial plant that has a very deep taproot, dies back over winter and then comes away in spring. And uh, there's some debate about whether it's a nitrogen fixer or not, and so we're not too sure, but it has very deep tap roots, and so therefore can draw up nutrients from deeply below, and also can draw up water and redistribute it to round, uh, the plants around it. So we're experimenting with lucerne, and we'd like to do more with it, except the seedlings we've all planted have been eaten by the slugs and snails, because they quite like it as well, and need some, need some time to be established. But uh, we have transplanted a few, so there we go. Now this here is a tree lucerne, uh, a tassigate is I think the other name for it. It's a nitrogen fixer, so it's a tree nitrogen fixer and so it uh, grows well and we've tried to plant one for every citrus tree, not all have survived but um, that's where we're slowly working to and so you can see down here there's the next one here and uh, so we use the traditional permaculture chop and drop method where we actually chop down the, uh, these are quite small still so they haven't been chopped much. Uh, chop them down and put them on the ground. Uh, as you can see here, what's actually been chopped down is some of the Fiji fence and put on the ground, but it all gets mulched in underneath the tree to improve the soil fertility, adding nitrogen from the leaves, which is the green stuff, and also carbon from the from the woody stuff, which also produces humus, which is all good for moisture retention and things like that. And so you can see over here under some of the trees here, we've got a nice patch of clover again growing that we've produced. And then we've tried to put for every tree again a comfrey plant. Now comfrey is not a nitrogen fixer but it has a very very deep tap root and so uh, it can receive nutrients and draw nutrients up from very um, from meters below. And so every spring we go around after they've got before they flower and cut them back and put the comfrey leaves under the plants so that they get the nitrogen from down and below and of course all the trace elements and nutrients from down below. This is the this is our south boundary and you can see that we have planted quite a large number of hedging type 
trees down here and they're all alders. So they're different types of alder, so that's an evergreen one, so that one doesn't lose its leaves. Whereas the ones down here are just starting to send out shoots. And so we've got about three or four different types of alders we've planted along here. Again to provide nitrogen fixing for the trees and we'll chop and drop and take them round. These are the nitrogen fixers which are um, she oak or casuarinas which we've then, uh, the, these were pre-existing hedges but we've been planting more down through here uh, and letting seedlings grow and fortunately this Casuarina hedge was already here when we uh, moved on site as part of the orchard uh, wind thing me Bob said, wind hedging, wind, wind stuff, wind protection and uh, when we prune this, being a nitrogen fixer it then goes under the trees as a chop and drop and mulch back in and you can see here that there's uh, the leaves of the casuarinas mulching into the ground and they're high in silica as well which is interesting and so we use this uh, chop and drop to fertilize the trees with which seems to have worked quite well because like this one here we've had to prune out the middle of because it got too high and I, I even I couldn't prune it, uh, reach the fruit on it so seems to be working this here is another type of nitrogen fixer we're playing around with. It's a very beautiful native broom and we'd like to plant more of them. It's just uh, sourcing them can be quite difficult. Tried to take a bunch of cuttings over winter to sprout but they all got killed off with the heavy frost we got this year so maybe better luck next time. So yes native brooms and we'd like to use native stuff wherever possible because we think that's the most ethical thing to do. This is another way we conserve nitrogen. So these trees have been pruned, the tops have been pruned out because they've grown too tall to uh, be able to reach the fruit easily and so we then chop up and mulch up the car prunings onto the orchard floor and in the environment so that uh, you build up the soil but also return the nitrogen to the soil so you conserve nitrogen and uh, you also add organic matter and humic acid and all the other great things that soils made up of and build the soil up in the process. Now the reason that uh, you can still see the leaves and if we look closely you can still see some of the bar, um, branches is we don't use me mechanical machines to chop this up into mulch we actually do it all by hand with a pair of secateurs uh, just doing a wee bit every day and it takes care of the week's prunings. Uh, there's two reasons for this one I don't particularly like using uh, electrical noisy uh, equipment just kind of disturbs the piece and secondly I don't like using the equipment where I might lose my fingers because you know I only have one set of those and uh, the practical reason also why we don't use the the mulcher that we have is because these branches uh, citrus branches are very um, bend not bendy but have bends in them you can see here that trying to put something like that through a mulcher needs a very big hole because of the way that it's angled and the branches are angular and so putting it through uh, the mulcher doesn't actually work very well which is interesting so there we go. Although not, not related to uh, nitrogen, I thought I'd show you this. This is our pruning so far in the last uh, two or three months, probably two months. And uh, what we're doing here is we've taken off all the nitrogen in terms of off the leaves and we've stacked it all up here. Now it looks like it's ready for a fire and that's kind of what's going to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to leave it in the sun over summer so that the bark peels and so thus the moisture can escape so we can cut it up for firewood. Lemon wood is incredibly uh, dense wood, incredibly um, hot wood once it's dry. But places like this even after uh, being cut up and dried for a uh, few, for two years almost, still we're showing signs of being wet in the fire. So we're trying something new this year by leaving it out in the sun for it to crack the, bar the bark and uh, of course then allow the moisture in the wood to escape because it's very very slow drying wood and uh, we'll put that through the fire and then of course the ashes and the minerals that come out of that go back onto the into the orchard so we don't lose any of the nutrition. This here is also one of our nitrogen harvesters and redistributors so the uh, hens here eat the grasses, eat the seeds, eat the bugs and then it, some of it comes out as eggs but of course some of it also comes out as nitrogen that can be taken up by the plants again. So. We, this is also one of our nitrogen distributors and so Evie lays her pellets on the grass and so these weight per weight apparently have the same nitrogen content as chicken manure but uh, of course they're slow release so they don't burn the grass or cause problems again. And again it's a way of turning the grass 
enriching it with uh, beneficial microbes and other material and redistributing it back into the grass and into the soil. So hopefully you've seen now a wide range of things that we do to uh, get nitrogen to our orange and citrus trees and are doing it in such a way that we're not destroying any of the uh, soil life and so we're not using any urea or any uh, fertilizers because they will destroy the uh, the environment and the ecosystem and so we want to build the ecosystem up and uh, have it produce its own nitrogen so that's why uh, and in doing that yes we do take a hit in terms of uh, production but we believe it's the best long-term health for obviously my family fair and then for you guys as customers so enjoy enjoy our produce